Welcome to another edition of Broad Mind, where we explore the minds of writers, authors, and beyond. I'm your host, T.O. Rockwitz. Today's uh, topic, believe it or not, is music. Everybody loves it. Everybody feels it. And uh, we have two very special guests on today's show. We have George Lasso of the George Lasso Trio and Leanne Lovelace of the Royal Din. Welcome to the show, you two. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I, have, I have a set of questions uh, for you guys, some, some in which are going to be directed at you, Leanne, and some which are going to be directed at you, George, because you are a, you are a, a guitarist mm -hmm. and you are a singer for the most part. <laughs> yeah. So let me start out the show. Um, I, I'd like to know when and how did you two meet? Oh, okay. Do you want to take this or sure. me? I had a, we had a, um, we played a, I, I had a benefit concert. Um, it was a, to raise funds for brain cancer or something like that, right? I forget. Some sort of like weird brain disorder. And, um, but it was really rare and uh, <clears throat> I needed a vocalist and I didn't know Leanne at the time so I, I needed someone that can do jazz and Motown and blues and pop. So um, I was recommended by Jess Beach. Uh, she was recommended by Jess Beach so I gave Leanne a call. We had a couple rehearsals and our first concert was in this beautiful mansion on the ocean yeah, in Brantford to 500 people. Wow. <laughs> I was so it, nervous. It was, ama it was amazing. <laughs> it was my first real jazz gig ever. And we had done, what you said, like two rehearsals. Yep. Chris Jensen was on it. He and I had been on an album together for a um, Aiden Nolan, and I'd never met him. It was the first gig. Josh Bruno. Josh Bruno was on it. Steve, Steven Steve King Porter. Porter. Ben Belillo. Yep. Yep. Wow. All fantastic musicians. Wow. Pretty yeah, that cool. was our first gig. At what age did you discover music, and when did you say to yourself, I want it to be a part of my life? Go ahead. Um, I remember like when I was like really young, just feeling it like really powerfully. Like it affected me, music affected me. Any, it, it doesn't even matter the style, but if, if, you know, if it was good music, I felt it. But I felt it really deeply. So that's when I knew I wanted wanted to be a musician. Wow. So it was a feeling. Wow. Cool. I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, when I was really little, my dad, well, my dad was born in 29, and he was 50 when he had me. So I grew up with a completely different era of music um, based on his influence. So, you know, it was take, it was take five every day, time out, the album. I know it by heart, I could, you know, scat every solo. And from there, you know, my brother PJ was 10, year, is 10 years older than me, so I had his albums. And for me, it was mostly, I was a professional listener. Like, I collected music, I made mixtapes. I have thousands of albums, vinyls, tapes, CDs. I, I don't even know how I'd begin to organize it all right now. I mean, I have an idea in my head. But I was definitely a professional listener. I was a collector. And anything that moves me, or something I can learn from, like you asked me the other day, um, is something that I'll listen to, and I'll obsess over something for yeah. months, yeah. you know. Before, and I'll never get sick of it, but I'll have to shelf it for a little while. Oh, I know that feel. Yeah. But uh, at some point, I think when I started singing, I was about ten, and I did like the girls' club thing because you know it's like all we could afford, and um, I was Annie two years in a row, and Mother Abbess. You know, and that was it. You know, we really couldn't afford vocal lessons or anything after that. Mm. So I started playing drums in high school, and that's when oh, wow. I really realized, like, okay, I want to do this. Like, I definitely want to be a part of <clears throat> a collective, and I really enjoy playing with in bands and stuff. I enjoy working by myself and writing, but I don't know about you, but I I prefer collaboration of some sort. Camaraderie. Yeah, yeah. I, I crave that in music. I I've, like them all at this point. You know, like. Definitely, like, there's been times in my life where I just got so bored of writing by myself mm. yeah. that, like, actually to, like, rekindle my compositional part, I would have to, like, write with people. Uh -huh. Almost because I just would just slip into such boredom. 
Because yeah. doing things by yourself gets bored after a while. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, it does. Like, great. You know, like, <laughs> well, yeah, you it's like trying to, play ten, trying to play tennis alone. Yeah, you need that creative <laughs> like, connection. Yeah, you're exactly right. You need to have that creative connection so you can bounce ideas off each other. Yeah. And that's what makes a lot of bands really gel together. And when they lose that part, or, or like even when there's lead singers, yeah. and there's the, that certain element with, that the bands bring together with it, and if they lose it, they're not going to have it. I mean, you can try to replace them with others, but you can't. Yeah, it's more about the camaraderie in a band, I think, than just the skill. You know, <laughs> that's probably a different topic, but yeah. Although I do like writing alone too. Yeah, yeah. I I call myself I'm a self-professed sound junkie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love to just dissect music. You know, just that little part or whatever. I'll go to a musician and say, I just love that, that little thing that you did or whatever. Um, I actually started out loving music, like right from the cradle, because my mom used to have like the, the hustle, you know, the Van McCoy song playing all the time. So <laughs> I already knew good music because Steve Gadd was the drummer. Mm. Nice. So it came actually full circle for me in 2002 when I got to see him. And wow. yeah, <laughs> that was really great. But uh, my influence uh, also is polkas because my grandfather used to listen to them all the time. My dad was a polka drummer. <laughs> Professional. <laughs> That's so funny. Roll out the barrel. Yeah. Yeah, we have, we have <laughs> barrel fun. yeah, we have an accordion <laughs> somewhere sitting in my grandparents' room somewhere. <laughs> wow. It's, it's a pretty incredible thing, you know, but I, n nobody in my family actually picked up an instrument and really learned how to play. I mean, I, I had a drum kit in my garage and a guitar in my closet that I barely have ever touched so people are like why don't you it's, it's tough you know you I believe that music just like art is a, is a god-given gift some people have it some people don't and you can't teach it exactly you have to have it in you yeah. you don't ask for it it's definitely a calling no. no I've given up a lot of other careers and and my degree to sing because yeah. it's a calling. You don't, you don't ask to do it. People that ask to do it are trying too hard. Yeah. I think it just happens, and you have to follow it, otherwise you're not. But you have to work your butt off. Yeah. Especially practice, if you wanna, practice, practice. Yeah, yeah. especially if you want to play. Again, I'm just gonna like jazz. Like if you want, yeah. if you want to be a, like an efficient improviser in jazz, yeah. you need to know the, the stuff. Like you have to know the inner workings of what's happening and the language on top of it. Oh, I, I've seen your, you have an absolutely fabulous bass player named Preston oh, yeah. Murphy. <laughs> yes. Oh, he is just, <laughs> he's out of this world, man. I he recorded just, two albums with him. Not these, but other You ones. have to see him live to yeah. understand what I'm talking about when I say dynamic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that brings me to the next question of who are your musical inspirations? Like, you're a guitarist, so who... Who's inspired you and your style? And Oof. So many at this point. <laughs> um, it's like Jimi Hendrix, I really, he was the beginning. Um, and then once I learned, uh, I pretty much learned almost every tune when I was young off uh, Are You Experienced? Mm -hmm. And then I just went on to like um, guys like Wes Montgomery, Grant Green. I was into Eddie Van Halen, Randy Rhodes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, guys like Kenny Burrell, and then Schofield, John Schofield, mm -hmm. Pat Martino, Scott Henderson. So again, it's just like once music hit a certain point, mm -hmm. like you know, in the '50s, it was like you, jazz, rock and roll came from like the blues. Yes. Like even if you listen to like early Beatles, early um, who's that band with Stevie Nicks? Oh, yeah. What was that band called? <laughs> oh, Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood if you, Mac. If you listen to early, like, Fleetwood Mac. The one band that I can never think of. Yeah. Me too. If you listen to early Beatles, yeah. early Rolling Stones, um, early Who, yeah. they're all playing the blues. Yeah. Eric Clapton. Yeah. All those bands, all those guys played the blues. And even if you listen to, like, early Beatles compositions, mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff is just, like, a blues with a bridge and then a blues. Just like the one we play... I got something to say that might cause you. Oh, yeah. That's a blues with a bridge. Yeah. So you could even pull it apart. Like, I could actually, like, write things out and be like, here's the blues, here's the Beatles with the blues, here's the, the Rolling Stone. And literally, like, 
all those they were just blues music Amer- they wanted to be american blues musicians mm. yeah mm-hmm. and i've also noticed like uh it seems like a bunch of drummers have more of a, a jazz background too like with those, with those rock i i love bands. drummers that have jazz backgrounds mm-hmm. you know like bill ward like we were saying like uh Black Sabbath and of course John Bonham had the, oh, yeah. jazz background. Especially uh, Mitch Mitchell, Jimi yeah, Hendrix, yeah. Charlie oh, Watts. Yeah. Thank They're, God they got into but jazz. But they, they all brought their their style, and that's yeah. what what helped them create the rock and roll sound because of those other influences of the country yep. and the blues mm-hmm. to to bring it all together, and so you have this creative soup. Yeah, in a way. So I got to ask you, who's your influence as a singer? Because you have some <laughs> pretty strong pipes there, girlie. <laughs> Well, I, I guess it's, you know, again, like all of these artists that I obsessed over when I was young and still. So, I mean, it started with Ella Fitzgerald, mm-hmm. um, Billie Holiday. Um, and then, you know, as I was allowed to listen to my own music and not just my parents' music, um, Eva Cassidy was a huge influence on me. Mm-hmm. Um, all of her renditions of all of my favorite songs, you know, it just blew my mind that somebody could take some of those songs and just play it on an acoustic and sing it so, so well and so different from the original. Um, I would like practice singing to her into tapes and that's kind of how I started teaching myself how to do things the right way instead of the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Um, And Susan Tedeschi is a huge influence, Beth Hart, so you know when we're talking about the blues, Bonnie Raitt. um, When I discovered Etta James, my world got completely rocked because, yeah. like, Etta James was the one that I heard after Ella. So it was like this sweet Ella, and oh, every once in a while she gets a little raunchy, and then you hear Etta James, and it's like, what? Wow, okay, mm-hmm. she's just <laughs> going for it, you know? So that was a huge influence. Um, I. It sounds gosh. like Janis Joplin's a little bit. And different. obviously, yeah, I mean, Jan, everybody says, oh, Janis, Janis, Janis. And yeah, I, I went through a period Aretha with Janice, Aretha, I went through a period with her. I, and a lot of male singers actually have influenced me. Mm. Jeff Buckley, um, Dallas Green um, of City and Color, um, gosh, who are, uh, Matt, um, Matt Corby, Australian singer, um, Kimbra, somebody, you know, newer. Australian. Yeah, Sia. You know, she's a pop star now, but she wasn't always. She sang in Zero Seven, and she was awesome. And I learned a lot about studio, uh, how, how to create a really good tone in the studio mm. that less is more from, from her. And Plus, you studied with someone that... I studied with Ariane Leon's Heinz, who um, she studied with the man who sort of turned Celine Dion around, oh. her coach, and Shakira. he was Shakira's coach as well. So kind of how many degrees of separation, yeah. but that's sort of my style of breathing when yeah. I'm singing. So yeah, those are mine. I mean, Jimi Hendrix, I mean, music too. I mean, it's not just singers. Yeah. For me, it, it's been just a whole array of artists. Ani DeFranco, I, I, I could go on forever because I just collect so much. You can give me any genre and I'll just be like, oh yeah. Tricky, Portishead, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> And they've been around like since the '90s, 20 years, right? Oh yeah. So, yeah, it's funny how like these bands, because there's just so much today. You know, oh, it's yeah. like you're yeah. like, wow, that's 20 years old. <laughs> oh, like, what the hell? sorry, like, I feel old going? with that stuff now. <laughs> I, I go, I go backwards instead of forwards. I don't listen to too much new music. No offense to anybody or no. anything like that. <laughs> Actually, you listen. I, I can't this really is all new music. To, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, but. I okay. mean, just like what's on the radio, uh, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't move me. I don't listen to the radio. No. I probably should. It's like top forty. Yeah. yeah. Even Pandora is kind of becoming more redundant. Like I'll pick a station, and then the same stuff keeps coming. One thing out. I, I, I find, like again, all you have to do is go to like the iTunes top, or mm-hmm. like the ISC International Songwriting Competition, and look oh, at the winners. Yeah. yeah. And you listen to it. You know, they have all the. Like the first genre is AAA, I forgot what that even means, and then adult contemporary, and then the whole list of genres. And if you list, listen to half of the genres, yeah. it all sounds the same. Yes. Mm. Yeah. It's like there's, you know, it's, it's like. Country pop. There's pop. 
It's like if I if it's like if I want to hear Chinese, I want to hear Chinese. Right. If I want to hear German, right. I want to hear German, or I want to hear the blues, or I want to hear French, or I want to hear yeah. you know jazz or rock. They're all languages, or I want to hear bluegrass. But everything just sounds like not everything, but a lot of it just sounds like homogenized, M like, muddled. We, a little like bit muddled. all the composers. Everything, yes. It's like they're like, what are they gonna like? So let's just write what they're gonna like. Yeah. Who the mass, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like no one's being an original artist. They're all just trying to sound like what's going to be like, they're yeah. just trying to fit in. Isn't you know? that a reflection of our culture, though? I mean, we're yeah. so boring. We're teaching to a test. You know, I, I have a degree in, in elementary ed, and it's everything is just teaching to a test now. So mm -hmm. if you're teaching to a test, you're learning for a test, then how are you not writing for a test? Yeah. The test is what's everyone going to like? Okay, one, four, five, pop. You know what? What can we do here? It's the same formula over and over. It's that's our culture. I mean, isn't music a reflection of our culture? I mean, yeah. I know it sounds really negative, but <laughs> formulas are good. But when it all sounds the same, sounds right. formulated. And even it, even yeah. beyond the progression, it's like all the vocalists. It sounds like they're all trying to sound like the same, cutesy, corny. Yes. You yeah. know, it's like just. And it just bores the living daylights out of me. Yeah, me too. I, I could listen to uh, like uh, those late night shows. I could be in another room, and I'm like, did weren't, weren't they just on? You know? Yeah. It's like, no, that's a different band. <laughs> okay. It's yes. like I want to okay. feel something. Yeah. Yeah. You know that's all. It's like it's, just, it's all the same. <laughs> yeah, it's a cookie cutter thing. Yeah. Um, now I understand you write your own original music, and that's what we're all about is writing. Um, I'm wondering, when you do write music, is it a process in which you come up with lyrics first, then the arrangement, or vice versa? Um, for me, it's usually been the arrangement and then the lyrics, but I always have to have some sort of theme in mind if I'm writing. Um, like, for instance, the last time I sat down, Dave and I sat down and we wrote Dirty Water, <laughs> I had something in mind. You know, mm -hmm. so it was like, all right, I know I want to write about Waterbury. I know basically what I want some of the key phrases to be in the song, and I know what I want the structure to sound like and what instrument I wanted him to be on a Rhodes. Like, I had to hear that Rhodes sound that yeah, night. Oh, yeah. So sometimes it's just boom, boom, and it was an hour and we were done. Other songs, I've had the structure for years, and finally the lyric, the lyric happened. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, it's, it's not easy for me to just bang out a tune like some people you it's know. never easy to write mm -mm. it general. has to be I have to be you have to feel in it. that moment like yeah. it's like a seizure almost you know yeah and then Strong it just flows thing. I don't know if you're the same way but it's all different yeah and at all different parts of my life because I was writing since I was like a teenager music mm -hmm. so it's just and it all depends like like what's happening in my life like you know, when I was living at home and I'm being supported by my, like my parents, yeah. then it's like cool. I can <laughs> I have more time to write. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like it's I'm writing more, but like if I'm like having if I'm teaching five days a week and playing five nights a week, mm -hmm. you don't have now time. I'm just in this flow where it's constant go. Yeah. You know, so I just don't have the time, or you know, it's like in my mind to to compose. Because that's what I'd rather be doing, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, reality sometimes. Yeah. Actually, I'm starting school in September too um, for my jazz masters at SUNY Purchase. Oh wow! Congratulations. Thank you. Wow, very cool. I'll be studying with one of my heroes. Who's that? John Abercrombie. Oh, nice. Very excited for that. You're it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to ask you since you're talking about that. Um, where do you get your influence to write? Is it through experience, other people's stories, dreams, overall world around you? Like, is there an overall theme where you just kind of pick and choose uh, what you're going to come up with? <laughs> it starts with a feeling. Pick your brain. That's it always starts with a feeling. Yes. It starts with some sort of inspiration, whether that's something sad. In my case, I really do enjoy sad music, and I think that there's a place for it. Yes. I think that it is sometimes some of the most moving yeah. um, and it doesn't need to be a dance song all the time right you know I learned that from just being in so many cover bands that it doesn't I don't care if I make people dance when I'm playing my own music mm. 
that is not the goal. The goal is to make people feel something. I want them to feel what I felt when I wrote it. So yeah, I think the inspiration comes from stories. It comes from my own experience mostly. I mean, mm. you can't be inspired. I mean, I get, do get inspired by other people's stories. Um, I've written about, you know, politics. <laughs> I've mm -hmm. written about, I wrote a song right during the election in 08, you know, that was back at none. Just talking about like, okay, well we're gonna vote and then it's just gonna be the same thing all mm. over again. It doesn't matter who you vote for. You know, that was my frustration. I put it into a song. But yeah, I, I think it's it's mostly personal for me. Because yeah. uh, I want to bring up just one song. I, I've been listening to this. This is absolutely a fantastic little EP called The Royal Din. Um, I know you didn't personally write it, but I, I was really blown away by this one track, which is number two, Child of Custody. I know that uh, Bobby Pickett, who who does amazing, uh, I don't know what you want to say, violin and everything. As the lyrics are just amazing, and you you carry the tune. Thank you. It's yeah, he wrote that from personal oof. experience. He strong did. stuff. Very it's, very strong. I miss singing that song. I miss very singing good. that. Yeah, that's that's a heavy tune. <laughs> yeah. One of the most beautiful things about knowing Bobby is that you will always receive random texts of the <laughs> most creative. <laughs> what would you say? Sometimes like, the letters oh, start with me, huh? you know, S, he and just, they end with F. <laughs> yes. With a Y I, in the middle. I've I've never be I've never been so el um, eloquently reduced to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> He's a genius with words and stuff. <laughs> We love you, Bobby. At any moment in time. I love you, baby. Uh, <laughs> um, as such as we were talking about uh, Leanne's involvement as a singer with the Royal Din, um, you, you play different shows around Connecticut? Yeah. Yeah. The, wherever we can get bigger shows, we do festivals and any big show we can do, town stuff. We try to keep it like outdoors open. So establishments you've heard right from her. <laughs> <laughs> it's all looking on the website. To, looking to hire a musician, uh, then she is dynamic. That's all I can say about her. And George, I, I totally and, and forgot to, to mention this to our audience, but you actually do the intro music to our show, Broad Mind, and it is called Clarity. I strongly urge you to pick it up and get it from CD Baby. But do you have any other websites? Um, yes, georgelesu.com, G-E-O-R-G-E-L-E-S-I-W.com. And uh, Leanne, do you have a website? I do. I have my own website, which is uh, lalovelace.com. Uh, and then the Royal Din is theroyaldin.com. And that's Din, D-I-N. <laughs> okay, and uh, I just want to say something about this absolutely fabulous new CD, which both of you were involved in. It's an uh, uh, album called Ta Ti Ta Ta by Luke Rodney. It is uh, Caribbean influenced, uh, reggae, just wonderful, like for children. You get a little learning lesson and everything, get plenty of harmonies and whatnot. It's just absolutely fabulous. And uh, we're running out of time, but I really want to thank you too. Thank you. And uh, you can catch George and Leanne playing at the uh, every Monday night in Ansonia at Crave. I am your host, T.L. Rockwitz. You have been on Broad Mind. Until then. And now for our special performance. Inside my head again I don't want no one to hold me I keep thinking about what you said In a world of chosen faces